Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to look at investigating compounds, specifically looking at the electrolysis of copper chloride. So we're going to remind ourselves of what are compounds. We're going to then focus specifically on copper chloride. In this particular demonstration it's going to tell us some useful things about different types of compounds. We're then going to look at a time-lapse video of the electrolysis of this compound when it's dissolved in water. We can then discuss some of the observations we can make and then be able to make up some conclusions about what copper chloride is made of. So when we're talking about compounds, what are we referring to? We're talking about two or more elements that rather than being mixed together, they're bonded together in a particular way, in a fixed ratio. That is, in a compound, we've always got a particular combination of elements joined in the same way each time. You know, two hydrogens combining with one oxygen to make water and we give it a specific unique formula that describes that of H2O. So they're bonded together in a way that's difficult to undo. They also end up with unique physical and chemical properties, especially that are different to the elements that join together to make the compound. So the compound functions as its own unique individual um, substance, rather than just as a mixture of the elements. So let's have a look at copper chloride as a particular example of a compound. So it's a compound made up of copper and chlorine atoms bonded together in a certain way. So we can tell that because we look at how those two parts join together to make the overall name. Dropping the INE on the end of chlorine and putting IDE to signify that they're bonded or joined in that way. And one of the things we know about copper chloride, there are lots of properties that we could measure, but one thing we know is that it can dissolve in water to make a blue-green coloured solution, which is what you're going to observe next. So we're going to, we're going to show you here a, a time-lapse video that shows um, what happens when we um, pass an electric current through a solution of copper chloride. So we've got this blue solution in the, the YouTube here. We've got connected up to a power supply, positively charged electrode here, negatively charged electrode here. Um, and then we're going to, you're going to see what happens when we switch it on. Okay, so we've got it. Some, uh, a bit of a zoomed in image here, you can see we've got some bubbles forming at the base of this electrode and we're starting to see a reddish colour uh, forming at the bottom of this carbon electrode on this side, the negatively charged electrode side. You can see this reddish colour, it's a deposit that's starting to grow in size, bigger and bigger as time goes on. So this is representing about 30 to 40 minutes of real time. We're seeing more significant bubbles of gas forming over on this side that are then escaping through the top of the tube out here. And that deposit continues to grow larger and larger over the time. And there we are. All right, so let's look at some of the observations we could make here. In the diagram that we have of our YouTube, so we saw two particular things. We saw bubbles of a gas forming on the positively charged side. Now this gas is chlorine gas with the formula of Cl2. Chlorine gas, we could detect that it's this because it has a greenish colour if we collected it. It's got a very unpleasant and toxic odour. But also chlorine can be detected because it bleaches the colour out of coloured substances like acid base indicators. Um, eventually that the colour of the solution would be affected over on this side by the action of that chlorine. And then over on the other side we saw that deposit of reddish brown kind of stuff that was growing off the end, which is actually copper metal. So a red brown deposit, we say, and that that deposit can be determined to have metallic properties, and we can identify that it's actually copper metal. So over the course of this, we've had chlorine gas forming on this side and copper metal forming on this side. But neither, uh, only the bubbles were only over here, the copper metal was only over here. Well, what can that be? Well, it, it helps us to be able to identify now what copper chloride is made of. What are the copper chloride particles like? Well, there's three things that it can tell us. That copper chloride must be made up of charged particles. So we establish an electric field by passing a current from one side through to the other. But the particles inside must have moved in that electric field in order for them to be changing at, or, you know, undergoing chemical change at one side and at the other. There was an attraction to these positive and negative electrodes that wouldn't be possible or wouldn't be happening if those particles were neutral or non-charged um, substances. So it gives us that first clue that yes, there's some charged particles involved here. Secondly, what about those charged particles? 
Well, the copper and chloride must be separate particles. So we mustn't have like this combined copper chloride particle, but actually we must have copper particles and chloride particles that are behaving independently once we've dissolved them in water. How do we know this? Well, each type of particle traveled in a different direction. The copper particles must have gone one way to make copper metal. The chloride particles must have gone the other way to make chlorine gas. If they were only one combined particle, you'd only expect movement or change to be happening in one direction. Or there would be no traveling at all because the particles would be pulled both ways and then stay still. Because we saw different observations at each electrode, they must be separate things. And so what was happening on each side was a different chemical process. So copper chloride is made of charged particles. Copper and chloride must be separate particles. So now we can see that the copper and chloride particles must be opposite in their charge. That is, they mustn't be the same charge, but actually one must be positively charged and one must be negatively charged. But so which is which? Well, the copper particles must be positively charged. The reason we know this is that there was the copper deposit appeared on the negatively charged electrode. So for the copper particles to have moved towards that side, they must be positive. If, unless they, you know, they wouldn't have moved to the negative electrode if that were not the case. So copper particles are charged but positive. That means, therefore, that the chloride particles must be the opposite. They must be negatively charged. Well, how do we know this? We saw bubbles of chlorine gas appearing at the positive electrode. That is, the chloride particles have migrated or travelled towards that positive side. That means they must be negative themselves because opposite charges attract. That's what we're seeing here and here. And so that tells us really useful information about this type of substance. It also means that we can now look at using, um, we could do this to, with all sorts of substances and see, well, do we end up with different, different types of particles appearing on opposite sides? Do we end with, you know, one type of, um, of substance at, on, on one side and one on the other side, or do we get no change whatsoever? This is a useful kind of test to be able to distinguish between compounds that conduct electricity and therefore must be made of charged particles and those that aren't. So we re just to recap, we looked at what are compounds. We focused on copper chloride as made up of copper and chlorine atoms bonded together in a certain way, but can be dissolved in water. We saw what happens when we pass electricity through it. We see a chemical change on each side, copper metal on one side, chlorine gas on the other, which helps us to identify that copper chloride is made up of charged separate particles. We have positive and negatively charged particles. Copper is positive and chloride is negative. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.